Welcome back to the Wildcast, guys. Hope y'all doing well out there. In this video, I got some updates for you guys on Steve Bannon, Peter Navarro, and a new person that we haven't discussed too much, Andy Biggs. He, he said something interesting that requires some attention. So let's first start with Steve Bannon. So as you guys know, Steve Bannon lost to the Justice Department prosecutors in his contempt of Congress trial. Of course, he was in, in contempt of Congress. A jury found him guilty about two weeks ago. He said that the law is on his side and he's going to win on, on appeals. Uh, he just lost a mo motion for acqui uh, acquittal, excuse me, acquittal, just like uh, anybody could have predicted this, by the way. I did. Uh, when Gillen Maxwell went for uh, a turnover, basically trying to invalidate the uh, jury verdict, a judge is not going to go for that unless there are serious constitutional violations, serious prosecutorial misconduct, or some kind of other serious misconduct by a juror. Okay. And in the Gill and Maxwell case, that was much more closer uh, to that to that standard because a juror did mess up in one of his questionnaires. But even then, the, the acquittal request was not granted. So any idiot could have told him that he was not going to win on this. His lawyers know because his lawyers are not that stupid. They knew that he was going to lose and he's going to lose on appeals too. Okay. So the big news is Steve Bannon has lost his motion to overturn his conviction. Predictable, but nevertheless, it is a development. So that's that. What next we move on to a new person that we haven't talked about. One of the politicians who organized the Stop the Steal rally, which we know because Ali Alexander has come forward. He was, you know, spoke like a big tough guy. He was talking about having 1776 again and we're going to get violent. So you better do what we say. He was basically threatening politicians with violence unless they reelected Donald Trump. I want them to know that 1776 is always an option. Yeah! Yeah! These degenerates in the deep state are going to give us what we want or we are going to shut this country down. Yeah! It's 1776. 1776. 1776. 1776. That's what he was doing. Ali Alexander and all the other people who uh, came out that rally. Alex Jones spoke and Roger Stone spoke at the Stop the Steal rally, by the way. Um, the Justice Department is looking into all those people. The January 6th committee uh, is also looking into them as well. We just found out that uh, because of the leak that happened in Alex Jones's trial. Now, the January 6th committee wants those text messages. So hilarious stuff. Uh, his lawyers are the worst. And um, Alex Jones would have pretty, uh, pretty big grounds to actually sue Mr. Reynold and Dino Reynold because he uh, he gave privileged material, some privileged materials to the opposing uh the plaintiff lawyer so the opposing team absolute incompetence so <clears throat> we already know uh from the testimony of uh of this guy over here and according to ali alexander which you're about to hear in his own words these three congressmen were in on it all along take a listen i'm the guy who came up with the idea of january 6th when I was talking with Congressman Gosar, Congressman Andy Biggs, and Congressman Mo Brooks. It was to build momentum and pressure, and then on the day, change hearts and minds of Congress peoples who weren't yet decided or saw everyone outside and said, I can't be on the other side of that mob. Congressman Andy Biggs of Arizona is running away from those comments. He is through his staff saying he never even remembers meeting Ali Alexander, even though he did send a tape message to one of Ali Alexander's Stop the Steal rallies. He uh, he caved right away, as all these people do. They're not tough guys. They're pathetic losers uh, who are not ready to go, go to war despite what they say. And as soon as the Justice Department came for uh, Apu over here, Apu uh, flipped and uh, he gave all the information they asked for, as he should, as an American, if he's actually an American, when the Justice Department asks you for something, you give it unless you unless you're a criminal, because the only people who have to fear the Justice Department are criminals. And that that brings us to Andy Biggs. So because of Ali Alexander, we know that Andy Biggs was part of the January 6th organizing the this this rally and he was part he wanted um uh electors he wanted courts to overturn uh some of the elections in these states and him and paul gosar and mo brooks were some of the people who were talking tough after the election talking about overturning the election basically they supported donald trump and that they also asked for pardons we know matt gates also did as well uh that we know uh, for sure and uh and uh roger stone got a got a pardon 
Now, Roger Stone got the pardon earlier, so I want to make it clear it wasn't for this, uh, for January 6th stuff. He was a criminal, Roger Stone, and he was pardoned by Donald Trump because Donald Trump is a criminal himself and he helps out other criminals. So without further ado, let's get to what uh, a tough guy, a tough guy uh, Andy Biggs here had to say. He says he wants to defund the FBI and the Justice Department. And we don't have control of the government right now. We sit there, I'm in a minority of the minority. We have to get the House back, we have to get the Senate back, and then we have to bring them in, and we have to, there are things you can do, you can do the Holman Rule. No, you can't. You, and that's what you do, is you, you start defunding some of these bad agencies, the FBI, yeah. the DOJ, you use the Holman Rule to de defund people who have abused their power. You bring impeachment articles against the judges who have violated due process rights in the federal statutes, on, for instance, on pretrial detention. I'm like Cash. I've gone through a lot of these files. I don't see any basis for, for pretrial detention. It's He's still defending the criminal traitors who attacked the Capitol on January 6th. Uh, so he wants to go after the judges. He's going to lose. He doesn't know anything about the law. The judges had all the authority uh, and they have a lot of discretion to determine what they want to do on pretrial detention, whether they want to do it or not. We did it to Gillian Maxwell. She wasn't necessarily a threat physically to anybody, but we did it anyways. The judge has a right to make those decisions. This moron doesn't know anything about, the, um, about American law. Why would he? Uh, so he just said defund the Justice Department and the FBI and the audience was clapping at CPAC. They have fully turned into traitors who hate law enforcement. They're just like Antifa now. They hate law enforcement. So the anti-establishment people have spun around and come to the same position. They hate the law. They hate order. They want chaos and treason. Okay, which is what Donald Trump was planning to do, was overthrow the government, uh, d completely violate the Constitution, shed all over it, and make violence the norm in America of taking power. So next time, whoever wants to come to power has to violently attack the Capitol, stop the certification, and just become president. That's what he was trying to do. Obviously, it didn't happen because, you know, the law enforcement actually came forward. The military and the FBI were uh, sent to clean up the Capitol and, and arrest all these criminals, uh, which should have included Andy Biggs. But of course, he doesn't have a spine, so he wasn't actually physically there. His minions who are stupid enough to follow him were the, were the poor suckers who got arrested at the Capitol. Okay, they're violent thugs. I say poor suckers because they're, they're, they were good people at once, but they got into politics. They got obsessed with Donald Trump, and they went down this rabbit hole of conspiracy theories, and they are now in prison. Okay, like Mr. Ayers, who testified in front of the of the committee, who, who was a normal guy, a working class person, and he got sucked into social media and started following this these lunatics like Andy Biggs and Donald Trump. And he's now he had he, he luckily the Justice Department went easy on him because he didn't do any violence. So they let him off. They let him plead guilty. And he was able to get off like with a month in, month in jail or something like that. Anyways, he got lucky. Many other people did not. But uh, he brought up the Holman Act, which he doesn't even understand. The Holman rule does not allow to get rid of or even defund the Justice Department or any other department. It allows, it allows Congress, when it's in effect, it's not in effect right now, uh, it was in effect in January 17th, but then it was, uh, it was uh, uh, deactivated once again when the Democrats came in uh, in the 116th Congress. But it, it allows you to reduce the salary of, of a specific federal employee's or cut specific programs. The Justice Department is not a program. It's an institution that was uh, that was uh, passed into law uh, back and created and funding was created for it back in back in 1870 after the Civil War, uh, which uh, we know what side Andy Biggs would have been on uh, the traitor side, of course. And um, and so he's wrong about how he was going to use the Holman Act. The Holman Act does not allow to defund the Justice Department or the FBI. By the way, the FBI works for the Justice Department. You moron. OK, <laughs> so. Um, Anyways, he doesn't even know the law. He doesn't even know politics. He doesn't even know this rule. This rule does not allow for getting rid of the Justice Department or even defunding it. It allows for specific employees to be fired. You can use it to do that. You can use it to cut um, uh, the number of positions that you have in a certain governmental uh, executive agency. Uh, these are things that you can do with Holman Rule. It cannot defund the Justice Department. So this moron doesn't know the law, doesn't know politics, and doesn't even know the Holman Rule. But ex expected from somebody who's uh, a, a friend of Donald Trump. He's a moron. They're all morons. And uh, so there you go. That's that. OK, so again, traitor who who was who definitely knew 
that it was going to get violent that day. Oh, this guy is on social media. He was on Parler. He was definitely on Twitter. He was on all the social media out outlets, just like Donald Trump was. And they and and he knew that Donald Trump's uh, uh the most vi uh, violent, the not the most violent, the most dedicated people were willing to do violence on January 6th. They knew that there was tw there was it was all over Parler. We're going to go and kill this Democrat. We're going to kill the communists. All this stuff was said on Parler. He knew it, yet he participated in organizing uh, the rally anyways and riling people up uh, for, to go attack the Capitol the next day. OK, or when the when the uh, January 6th actually happened. OK, because they had a rally on January 5th. OK, so that's that. Um, we're done with the traitors. Now we're moving on. Actually, we're not done with the traitors because we're now we're moving on to the Justice Department filing civil suit against Peter Navarro, asking for writ of replevin, which I'm going to explain what that is in a second. So if you guys have been paying attention to what's been happening with Peter Navarro, he got arrested about a month and a half ago for not complying with the congressional subpoena. He was charged with contempt of Congress and he was arrested by the FBI and he cried about it for a couple, he's still actually he's still crying about it. Okay, how, how unfair it is and all this stuff. Now, this particular lawsuit is happening because he refused to turn over email records where he did government business on a private email account. And the Presidential Records Act compels every government official, specifically people who work in and around the president who works as an advisor to the president. These people are compelled by law, federal law to turn over these records after they leave. OK, when they leave, you have to turn that over to the presidential archives. And Peter Navarro refused to do that. Therefore, the Justice Department is now suing him civilly, asking for damages for the U.S. government because he stole and kept basically private records that belong to the, the U.S. government. And now he's in trouble for that. And so the Justice Department has filed a writ of replevin, which is basically in layman's terms, it, it's a way to re take repossession of something that was stolen from you. So he these government records that he talked about, this is similar to what Hillary Clinton did, okay? But he refused to turn over what those conversations were. But the Presidential Records Act <clears throat> creates a framework for the preservation of certain records termed presidential records by the statute uh, created or received by the president, vice president, and persons who advise and assist them, like Mr. Navarro. He was the deputy assistant to the president uh, and director of the National Trade Council for his hiring up until April of 2017, when he was appointed assistant to the president and director of the Office of Trade and Manufacturing Policy. So he's a trade advisor. That's what he was. Okay. In addition to those responsibilities, in March of 2020, then President Donald Trump appointed Mr. Navarro to coordinate the government's uh, use of the Defense Production Act to respond to COVID-19. Uh, I actually supported when Navarro talked about the Defense Production Act back then. I supported it because we should have done that. I, I don't know why Trump, Donald Trump didn't do that, but uh, he definitely should have. OK, so it's not like I never supported this guy in the past before he went traitor on January 6th. Um, I was actually supportive of his trade policies. I He has a very nationalist trade policy, which I support. OK, we need to rebuild America. I agree on that. But then he turned into a traitor by trying to do the green sweep uh, strategy. So it's not like I never supported these people or their policies. I support good policies for America no matter where comes from because I'm not partisan. I don't care about either of these parties. I care about what's good for working class Americans and following the law and not trying to overthrow and destroy American democracy is what's good for American workers. OK, among other things, we definitely need more help going to the American workers. Definitely. Prior to filing this suit in an, uh, uh, in an effort to avoid litigation, the Department of Justice Counsel contacted Mr. Navarro by email and uh, the U.S. mail to secure the presidential records that Mr. Navarro had not copied to his government email account. The, the, the law required that you keep somehow you keep record of you, what you talked about on your private account. OK, and he was using uh, proton mail or something. He was using proton mail. While serving at the White House, Mr. Navarro used at least one non-official email account, an account hosted by the non-official uh, service ProtonMail to send and receive messages uh, constituting presidential records. So according to the Pres Presidential Records Act, you need to turn over anything that has to do with official communications about government matters, even if it's on your private device or on your private uh, email. OK, email account. OK, and he had an, he had one. He refused to turn over. Mr. Navarro did not copy each email or message constituting presidential records that was sent, uh, sent or received on his non-official account or uh, accounts to his official government email account or to his official government email. So you're supposed to copy the official uh, government account, your official email account on everything you do on outside account. You can CC it. 
right? Or BC or whatever it is. You, you, you guys know what I'm talking about. You can CC other accounts um, uh, when you're sending stuff on one account. You can uh, copy the other accounts. So he didn't do that, okay? So the Justice Department gave him a chance to do that. They, they reached out to him. They tried to do this without suing him. Guess what? He didn't cooperate, okay? Discussions with Mr. Navarro's counsel to secure the return of president's record ultimately proved unsuccessful. Mr. Navarro has refused to return any president's records that he retained absent a grant of immunity for the act of returning such uh, documents. Why would you need immunity? If they were going to resolve this without any litigation, they're like, hey, give us back the presidential records and we're good, okay? But he refused to do it without immunity. That's interesting. Who needs immunity? Criminals. That's who needs immunity. Interesting. Okay. Well, let's keep that in mind. Mr. Navarro is wrongfully retaining presidential records that are the property of the United States and which constitute part of the permanent historical record of the prior administration. Mr. Navarro's wrongful retention of presidential records violates District of Columbia law, federal common law, and the Presidential Rights Act, or the Presidential Records Act, excuse me. <clears throat> Plaintiff asks that the court order Mr. Navarro to transmit uh, forthwith the wrongfully withheld presidential records to the United States and to award all other relief that the court deems appropriate. And uh, they address jurisdiction and venue, which, of course, they have jurisdiction. This is a violation of federal law. And the Justice Department for the District of Columbia has the right to go after him. So this is the D.C. Uh, civil division that's filing this. Uh, there's the criminal division for the Justice Department and there's a the civil division. Usually the Justice Department files criminal litigation against people who violate federal law, but they also do file civil lawsuits as well. So, so this is a civil lawsuit, okay, asking for the court to force um, Peter Navarro to give back what belongs to the people of the United States. All the records, everything that's that happens in that office belongs to us, okay, not necessarily to even the president. It's his communication, but he works for us. He's paid by the taxpayers, the president, and all the other people in the government. That's what America is built on, that we work for the, that they work for us, the people. Okay, that's what that's who he stole from. When you don't give stuff back, that's technically stealing, and that's why they have filed for a um, a writ of replevin. So they go on to explain all the communications they had. They tried to do this the nice way, but uh, because the Justice Department is very nice. Okay, if I ran the Justice Department, they would not be that nice. Okay, as long as the law supports it, I will go after criminals in a very very uncomfortable and tough way. But the Justice Department today is very nice. They ask very nice and kindly before they actually take tough action. It, even this is not that tough action, okay? They already arrested him, by the way, for the contempt of Congress charge. We already know that. But this is a separate lawsuit that they have filed against him. They're asking for the following. Request for relief. One, issue a writ of replevin authorizing the recovery of any presidential records in the possession, custody, and control of Mr. Navarro. Now, a writ of replevin is basically um, a court ordering somebody to turn something over that belongs to somebody else. So you stop paying for your car, you bought it, you just bought a car, you refuse to pay for it. And the, the bank can, if the bank, if the bank owns the note, they can come and take your car. They can, what is it called? Ah, uh, repo, um, repossession, right? To do that, they would get a rate of replevin. That's one example of it, but there are many other examples. Sheriffs, sheriffs often file these or sheriffs enforce these when people uh, steal something from somebody else or you move out of a house, but then other people move in and keep your property. Sometimes that happens when you change houses and those people refuse to give back your property. Then you would uh, file a, in the local courts, you would file a writ for replevin and the sheriff would go and seize that property back for you. That's something also happens. So this is a much rarer case where there's happening at a federal level where somebody is keeping presidential records and not giving them back this is utter insanity okay so there that's why they're asking for rid of a replevin from the judge here um this is federal court obviously that's why the justice department is involved um second issue an order requiring mr navarro to cooperate one with the uh, with the official uh serving and implementing of the writ of replevin that's basically backing this one up. Two, other similar order to ensure a return of presidential records to the U.S. C, award damages to the U.S. Uh, to the U.S. as appropriate. Award plaintiff costs and reasonable attorney's fees incurred in this action. And award other relief as the court deems just. He's already in trouble for contempt, being contempt of Congress. He was arrested by the FBI last month because he refused to show up for the January 6th committee subpoena because he doesn't think that it's uh, worth his time. So he refused to show up. The FBI went and arrested him because he was in contempt. He refused to show up for testimony. He refused to produce documents. Exact same thing that Steve Bannon didn't do. And guess what? His ass is going to prison for a month now. Okay. He's going to appeal, do the rigmarole. He's going to lose and he's going to go to jail for a month. Not prison, excuse me, jail. He's not going to prison. He's going to jail. Okay. So it's a much lesser sentence, like I said. 
And uh, again, the Justice Department is very kind. If I ran the Justice Department, things would run much roughly for criminals. Again, okay? they would be treated in a much worse way as they deserve because they think they're above the law. People need to be shown that they're not above the law in America. You're going to obey. That applies to me too. If I get a summons, I'm going. Okay, I'm not going to break the law. I'm a regular citizen. If somebody summons me from the government, I'm going. I went to jury duty multiple times. I'm actually happy to go to jury duty because I love seeing trials because I'm a legal uh, nerd. But nevertheless, if you're a citizen in America and the Congress summons you, you go. Okay. Hillary Clinton, perfect example. I don't like Hillary Clinton. Republicans don't like Hillary Clinton, almost except for centrist Democrats. Nobody likes Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton got summoned by the Republicans to, start, uh, to show up for like a Senate or House committee for Benghazi. She didn't want to go, but she went. You know why? Because she obeys the law. Okay. I have a lot of problems with Hillary, with Hillary Clinton, but she went. She didn't want to go, but she went. Republicans get one. Steve Bannon didn't go. Um, uh, and uh, Peter Navarro didn't go either. And there's a couple other people too, okay, who didn't go. Mark Meadow, I think, didn't also didn't go. And he should also be arrested uh, by the FBI as well. They're planning other things for Mark Meadows, I think. That's why he hasn't been arrested yet. But we'll see. Because he's much more closer to Donald Trump. So they're probably trying to cut a deal with him. That's my hypothesis. I don't know yet. But we'll see. Um... Uh, Donald Trump has been told not to talk to Mark Meadows. That's not a good sign. By his lawyers, he's been told, which means that Mark Meadows is probably cooperating with the feds. That's what it looks like now. We'll see what happens. We'll know for sure uh, in a while because after we, we found that after uh, Pat Cipollone got uh, subpoenaed by the D.C. Uh, grand jury investigating January 6th. So things are not going well for the criminals who organized January 6th, and things are not going to go well for Mr. Navarro here if he doesn't turn over these records. So most likely, oh, actually, I don't know what's going to happen. He's already refused to show up and do something that he was ordered to do. I was going to say he's most likely going to give these over, but who knows? If there's actually incriminating evidence there, he probably won't. He's going to fight this all the way, and he's going to lose, by the way. Uh, no jury's going to side with Navarro stealing presidential records and uh, refusing to give them back to the Justice Department. So, and with that being said, that's all I got to say for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, make sure to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell, press all. And if you want to support my work, you can do so by joining channel memberships down below by clicking the blue join button or alternatively, you can also support me on Patreon. There'll be a link in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time. As always, peace. Here you go, Ranko. Two more no caps and two more donuts. Thanks, darling. <laughs> Anytime. Hey, Ranko. She likes you. Chicks dig a man in uniform. Well, they don't dig me. You just don't try hard enough. What do I do wrong? You gotta look like you ain't turned. How does that work? Uh oh, look sharp, huh? Sitting what? with your back to the door. What if I were a perp? Dread, hi. I asked you a question, Judge Hill. I'm facing the door, Dread. We got all angles covered. Oh, yeah. Draw! <laughs> it's all right, citizen, I'm making a point here. Judge Renko, if I were a perp, this gun would have taken your head clean off before you could draw. Sloppy. Yeah, right, Dread. Thanks for the tip. You people with A-Watch. No, we're B-Watch. What would we be doing here? I make it 1630. If you're on B-Watch, then you're on duty. Uh, yeah, we are. Well, then what are you doing in a drunken diner? Uh, Dredd, easy now. Well, we're supposed to take meals in public around here. Yeah, yeah Dredd, it, like, ups our presence, even on breaks. To deter criminals? Uh, yeah. I caught a code 14 across the street, right under your noses. Oh, yeah, Gimpy, oh, we're gonna deal with that. Oh, after you break? Uh, uh yeah, yeah. You yeah. need a break every ten minutes, do you? Uh, uh no. Because well, this is an eight-hour shift. What was your first assignment? Sitting in here on your asses and eating donuts? Uh, we, uh, uh, sorry, Dredd. Don't be sorry. Be a judge. Get out in the streets and do your job. Yes, sir. I'll be watching you. And put your helmet on. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. <laughs>